Hey, what's up guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarkucha here. And this video concerns the red reel y'all saw in that video short. If you have seen it, I'm getting back into the distance casting deal. And I'm gonna learn the hard way, obviously, because I'm not using a reel that's particularly made for super distance casting. Yes, it does great for us once we attach bait and weight and, you know, I'm getting 100 yards plus, but I'm looking for 200 yard plus. So the deal with that is going to a field and casting that way because it's the only way to really tell if we're getting that 200 yards. Now, before we actually started the video of our testing, we actually did a practice cast, and what I was doing was, I did a cast and put it out there. Let me see, hold on real quick, okay. Because what I'm gonna do now is download it. I've got a knot, because if you look in the, the video short, there's some fishing line on the floor. I didn't leave it on the floor, I tied it to the reel and brought it in, because it was a good way to still store it and use it, however, before I did the first cast of that video, I did a simple cast so I can wet the line. I wet the outer line. I, I, oop, wrong way. I cast it out, and then I re-wet the line on the inner side because I knew I was gonna go further than the wetness would be able to penetrate on the reel. Gotta buy, gotta buy. I got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a caller The whole team Alright So, I'm gonna go ahead and download that top end But also, too I'm gonna spool it back on once I get it all off Because I also Almost hit my top end Or almost hit my backing so I want to know how far that cast was in comparison to trying to power cast. Um, we've been getting a lot of feedback on the channel of guys telling us that habits aren't made for distance casting like that. Which, you know, nobody ever sees them on those big tours. Okay, so that's about right where I was when I actually landed on that first cast. All of that was there. So to, to further check it out, I'm gonna spool it back on and see how, what the distance was on that. Then I'm gonna down spool it again, because I know too, if y'all saw how the reel was really filled up, that's the only drawback to casting in a field is you don't get to pack on the line entirely tight like that. It's almost like a break off every cast. And the first cast was awesome because I did it off the machine here. So now that's gonna be something else to be looking at. It wasn't just that the reel was failing and not doing its job. It's when you're casting your field, there's no water weight, there's nothing to hold the line to give you any kind of pressure to help you re-spool it onto the reel. So it, it doesn't pack on as easily as it would if there's water weight or something. Now the other thing is too, with tournament distance casting like that, they do a um, monofilament, probably 50, 60 pound test on top. And then they go to like 10 or 12 pound test underneath, you know, and sometimes even lighter, just depending. But I know they have certain regulations and I don't know what they are. So don't, don't, um, but I know tournament casters are on my channel and they will chime in and share the knowledge of how they judge the line. I know it's according to thickness. It's not by really weight, it's by thickness because there are some companies that say it's a lighter test line and it's super thick and they're real particular on that notion. Now, yes, I'm using Braid doing this testing and those tournaments are during mono. Now, I know if I could figure that out on Braid, the mono will be easy, so I'd rather get get it done this way, so that way I can ensure I'm on the right track. And the other thing is too, guys, I'm using a bigger reel because when I do make that cast, I want to ensure that I have plenty of line left over after the cast to be able to fight a monster fish when it does hook up and decides to run. That's the key word here, guys. Like I've got 60 pound test line to 100 pound test. 
when I, I even if I do 200 yards I'll still have currently right now I've got 500 yards of 60 on the reel even if I were to do 200 yards at this point I still have 300 yards of 60 to play with which is plenty enough for me to turn back seven and eight footers at that distance now let's see how far my cast was So there's a burn there and I'm going to come back to that and actually right there is where I'm, I'm going to start my cast on this next deal so it's about 50 yard top shot from that point but let's go ahead and get all the line back on there to see where I actually did cast. It says 130 yards, but let's take this off. This is, and let me zoom out so y'all can see this. It's about two yards of line. So that was about 128 yard cast on that first attempt. And like I said, I was just wet in the line because I knew I was going to get further than that. But after putting on the extra weight behind it, as you can tell, I don't have a lot of gapage here. So there's already one thing and that's too much line on the reel for it to be casting like that. I was able to get it off on that first one because like I said it was just a nice easy cast. I wasn't really trying anything. But now that I'm really get, taking this seriously and trying to get it out there, I know I have too much line on here. So let's take it down and let's see what's up on this. <clears throat> and for our customers. When we do spool up reels, yeah, that, that's overly filled right there. This one was set up for when we went offshore fishing, but I hadn't had a chance to download it. And I should have known better, but, you know, it also gives me an opportunity to show why we don't pack on a ton of line, especially for casting, because it's not always going to work. You may get off that one good cast, you know, but this is the, the way it works, too, so... See that extra line right there? That was the knot from when the line broke off and I had it on the floor and I was testing it to see if I did have too much line. And even at this level right here, I'm still too high. So I'm gonna take it down some more. And actually I'm gonna take it all the way down to that burn. I got a real bad burn down there. Right here, see that? But I still think I need to go a little further, so I am. And then I'm gonna, right there, that's the one I want off. Right there, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Actually, you know what, I could put a little more back on. No, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna cut it here. 
Then I'm gonna down spool it some more, and then re-spool it. I'm gonna take it all the way down to the knot, or to the splice, because on these casts, I want y'all to see firsthand, you know, that how much braid I got on there for the top shot, and then into the backing. Now, once I start going into the backing further, then obviously the only way to really tell is to uh, have one of those surveyor deals or use your phone. I know um, there's a good buddy of mine up in the Galveston area, and uh, he's the one who's been, you know, inviting me to a lot of these distance casting tournaments and um, sharing a ton of his knowledge. I mean, the, the dude knows his distance casting reels, timing, and there's so much behind the scenes uh, stuff that is done and or need to know that I know he's going to chime in and give us a hand with, you know, this. He's also giving me a heads up on a guy on the East Coast who actually will mag out these reels for distance casting that uh, the gentleman has done up to HHWs on them and stuff. Now, that's going to be the thing. Guys, like, I want bigger reels. I want to be able to, like I said, have that line capacity after the cast to be able to fight monster fish. Because I know this is going to ensure that I don't always have to keep getting on the kayak to put a small bait out past the third bar. I want to be able to cast it and have it go good. Okay. So, as you can tell, that line ain't been touched in a minute. It was super, super flat there. Okay. And now that I got that out of the way, you know what, let me take it down and level it off just a little bit more. And that's going to be the problem there. See how the braid kind of sticks there? I may have to switch over to a white braid. You know what? Because the coating on the braid is actually kind of holding it there is what it looks like. But also, too, uh, it may be just the, all the pressure that we're putting on the braid is it's, it's folding it in and it's taking a little bit of pressure for it to come out. So, I don't know. It's, it's definitely going to be something to learn, see, and experiment. I am going to try my best to get a camera up close on the cast of the reel to see what's actually happening. And obviously, that I can already tell is going to be a problem because if it's coming off like that, it's slowing down the cast and will not allow it to go out the distance that I want it to go. So, on that note, I'm going to go and download it some more. Because if I want this cast to work, I need for all everything to be in my favor for this. So, but this is okay. okay I'm, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing, guys. This is <laughs> I'm having to hold back my line counter here because, or actually, no, I don't. There you go. Um, I really don't need it keeping track of my line right now.
horrible job because I'm trying to do two things at one time of uh, spooling and wetting. Oh, shoot. All right, so there's my connection point. Let me back this off. I'm going to redo my line counter as well. So that way, I know when the green is off, how much top shot is flown off the reel. Seven yards before my top shot kicks in so that'll be a good little test there and like I said this is something that everybody's so used to throwing mono and we've been spooling a lot of our customers reels with braid but they are smaller reels and they're doing smaller test lines they're doing the 40 to 80 and they are loving it however I want like I said I want bigger reels for more stopping power um, so that way when I do throw a bigger bait, you know, I have the ability to fight bigger, bigger fish. I'm going for big game, guys. So this is definitely going to be, like a, like I said, a learning experience for us. And uh, I'm going to take you all along for the ride. For those of y'all that are new to our channel, this is part of our Spoolin' Library because with the Spoolin' Library, it gives us the ability to spool reels, do not tying, splicing, and all of that for everybody's knowledge because now you have a channel where you can go and do some research of your own if you're planning to buy a reel and spool it with a certain amount of test line or what this kind of could give you an idea if or it, it will give you an idea of what kind of line and the capacity that you're looking for and also too will let you know if the tackle shop you're dealing with knows what the hell they're doing because if I don't know we're hearing some crazy crazy poor numbers of other tackle shops and what they're doing to reels I mean Avid 50s with 500 yards 100 pound test and 100 yards 100 pound mono oh that's that's oh and they found us because of the spool the spooling videos that we have been doing but it really caught their attention when I grabbed the spool and I was just going like this with them. They say their fishing reels at the end of the day when they get it so they can go fishing are like that. And they run into a lot of problems. But it was their, their local tackle shop that everybody goes to. And it's actually a big shop, but, you know, I guess that's what's happening to them. They're getting lost in the sauce. So we've got 57 yards of the 100-pound top shot on top of 60 pound of the Cortland braid here so we are going to keep rocking it and this is going to be tournament casting take two <laughs> um, but first I've got to fix that real seat let me give you an idea of what happened and bet let me explain Okay, guys, so this is one of the tournament uh, testing rods. Y'all remember it is where I threw that 8-ounce weight, you know, a tremendous distance. Here, let's do this. However, when putting it on an Avid reel, these deals, they slip off. So it wasn't allowing me the ability to even start doing the casting with an Avid reel. These are made for the uh, metal reel foots that are real thin and are not tapered as crazy as an Avid is. Now, this is an HDX rod that is probably 15 years old or so. It's super, super old. And it was one of the ones that I dug out of my collection to 
because I needed a real seat. However, as you can tell, you know, I blew through it and I mean, it's, it's old, the, the, the plastic inside is gone and stuff like that on top and bottom, but you know, it, it wasn't enough for me to stop it. But as you can tell, this is super old. It's probably not as strong as it or it, where it should have been. But at the same time, too, it was my only long distance casting rod that I had with a real seat that allowed me to do what I needed to do. So technically, like I said, this is take one, take two. I'm going on take three of tournament distance casting with the bigger rails. So we're going to keep rocking and rolling it, guys, and we look forward to it. <laughs>